underbelly of the pharmaceutical industries and this Affordable Care Act and, and, and things like that. I know that was a very good topic that they had on earlier today. And I thought that you and I can touch base on that. And, and you know, obviously being in the pharmaceutical industry for over 12 years, you know, I, I know the good, the bad, and, and the ugly. So I thought we would hit on that, man, talk a little bit again. I want to go over the stats on this Eli Manning, Big Ben. Okay. Um, I also wanted to talk to you real quick on uh, on our show about the uh, you know those two beautiful African American uh, gymnasts that actually won back to back gold. Gold, but if you saw on Facebook, it was reported that you know some African American women were basically putting them on blast because of not taking care of their hair. But so I oh, think it should Jesus. be a pretty fun show, and maybe right. we could talk a little bit more about the Olympics as well, my brother. That sounds good, man. Well, Reggie, thank you for popping in here tonight, my man. I appreciate it. And folks, before we go. We got to play a song. No Reggie, you the man, brother. All right, bro. And, and <laughs> this was like, it was so filter. I, I apologize. So, goodbye, so, Reggie. Hands, Later. Reggie Lawrence. The one and only Reggie Lawrence joining us. Appreciate it. Reggie, Short People, his theme song, and he, otherwise known as Lil Sawed Off, but he is a good dude, the co host of the Sports and More show. And my main man, and can't wait to catch up with them. Hey, Thursday night, people here in the Central Time Zone, six o'clock is the jump off, seven o'clock Eastern. Join us for a couple hours on the Sports and More show. All right, let's get back to it. This is a podcast. A damn skippy is so. Chief Rocker says, Angie, you better be glad that I can't chat, but I will address you tomorrow. Uh, probably some political talk. The Chief Rocker, Jersey Vern, is a huge Hillary backer. My wife, eh, not so much. So that's going to be fun. Jay Fisher says, God damn dollars, how much shit you want to talk about? <laughs> oh, man. Hey, you know, I let people politic, man. I let people politic. And, you know, speak their mind. And that's one of the best things we can do up here in the Sports and More show. Patty Cake know that. All right. Who else we got up here? Dollar says, uh, Fish, tune in Thursday. You may learn something other than sports. Ooh. So, yeah, man, that's part of the Sports and More show. We talk about more as well. All right. So let's keep it moving along here. Let me get in some of this college football news, man. All kinds of interesting stuff breaking off. And also BYU. Now check this out. The LGBT advocacy group is protesting against BYU's possible bid to join the Big 12. Uh, let's see here. BYU is one of the front runners, in case you haven't heard out there, to join a new look Big 12 conference. And this group, however, does not want them to do that. Uh, the, the Mormon school, LDS, Church of Latter-day Saints, um, trying to become a member of the Big 12. But according to FoxSports.com, here is uh, Stuart Mandel, a coalition of national LGBT advocacy groups are urging the Big 12 not to admit BYU as a new member. Per a letter obtained by Mandel and addressed to the commissioner, Mr. Uh, Bob Bowlesby, it looks like his name, the groups are pushing against what they claim is active and open discrimination against the LGBT community by the university. Obviously, BYU is a very religious school and uh, very strict rules, the, ever, the uh, ever popular honor code, as people know. In a letter addressed to the commissioner, the authors write in part, quote, BYU actively and openly discriminates against its LGBT students and staff. It provides no protections for LGBT students, giving BYU's homophobic, biphobic, and transphobic policies and practices. BYU should not be rewarded with the Big 12 membership. 
Very interesting. BYU students and faculty are expected to follow the school's honor code, which includes a section addressing homosexual behavior. While same gender attraction is not itself an honor code violation, taking part in a same sex relationship is. So very interesting as these times are changing here, groups like this are getting more, more traction. So this is going to be real interesting. Will BYU be forced to halt a possible expansion bid into the Big 12 because of this? Stay tuned. I don't know. All right. Gopher fans out there. Lots of stuff happening for our Minnesota Gophers. As you know, practice just started for us here as well in the great state of Minnesota. Um, A few things that we need to keep an eye on. Obviously, we have new coaching staff, so with that comes, you know, how's this team going to look under Coach Tracy Clays in his first full season running the Minnesota Golden Gophers? You know, it's all him now, no more Jerry Kill, and it is his ship to run. There's going to be some big differences, the coach says, and definitely looking forward to making some changes and putting his stamp on the team as Coach Tracy Clays talked about that down in Chicago here at the Big Ten Media Day, or Media Week, actually, is what it was. We also have some new coordinators. Jay Johnson from Louisiana um, Tech, I believe, or Louisiana Lafayette. One of the Louisiana schools is coming back up here. He's actually from Lakeville, I believe. Lakeville, Minnesota, suburb of Minneapolis. And Jay Savile will help come up with new schemes on both sides of the ball. Johnson is the new offensive coordinator from Louisiana Lafayette. There we go. And look for him, as it says here, to have more pistol formations, more read option plays. He likes to play at a quick pace, so the Gophers offense is going to have to get a little used to that. Maybe not so many plays with our quarterback, Mitch Leidner, under center. We also have Savo, new defensive coordinator, He's been uh, promoted. He was the former Gopher secondary coach. And look for him to – he's trying to put together some new blitz packages, some mismatch plays. Um, He says it's game-to-game type stuff, or that's what uh, Gopher linebacker Jack Lynn says about it, the new uh, plays, new changes coming in on the blitz packages. So big changes coming up for these, these Minnesota Gophers. We got a new look offensive line as well. Um, also the big thing on offense, KJ may is off to the NFL. Um, he signed as an undrafted free agent with the New York giants. So how do we replace KJ may here in the land of gopher? I do not know. I really don't, but they're going to have to, they're going to have to find some people. I don't know if that's drew Willitarski. Um, but KJ may was really a a go-to guy in clutch situations And that's one thing the Gophers are going to have to look out for. Now, the Gov is going to have his Big Ten football preview coming up here in the next week or two. I'm going to take some time, really get into these teams here over the weekend, start doing the research. Got lots of big things happening, man. Lots of big things happening here with the Big Ten. And the Gophers, you know, Kirk Herbstreet has predicted the Gophers to win the Big Ten West. I don't know about that, but they have an Iowa schedule. Big Ten, you know, the Michigan, Ohio State teams have been removed. If the Gophers can't put together eight, nine, ten win season this year, they may have to shut her down. Speaking of Gophers again, we got two former Gophers competing, folks, for on the Minnesota Vikings for the same job. Now, uh, our former stud defensive back, Troy Stoudemire, came to the Minnesota in 2008 and Marcus Sherrill's took him under his wing, you know, was a mentor to him. And the same thing apparently is happening over here at the Vikings camp because Sherrill's who's been running some kickoffs back here for the Vikings has now been joined by Troy Stoudemire. So they are actually battling for the same position and are battling to be the team's pump returner. And even though both of them love each other and don't think of it as a competition, they know it's a competition. Troy Stoudemire says, I don't see it as a battle. It's just like when I came in as a freshman at the University of Minnesota, Marcus was there to guide me and help me out and get me going. So just being here and just learning under Marcus and just watching how he's doing it with the Vikings 
is helping me adapt to the system a lot easier. Now, Cheryl's, who was a junior when when Stoudemire joined the uh, Gophers, is now in his seventh year with the Vikings. Well done, Cheryl's, by the way, too. I didn't know. Seven years flies by. Uh, Let's see here. So, big things coming up there. I hope, you know, this would be great if they could find a way to both stay on the team. Stoudemire is actually working out as a wide receiver. So, keep your eyes tuned there. Um, Stoudelmeyer is really impressing the coaching staff. He went and played in Canada for the past three years. He played mostly at defensive back up there for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. But when the Vikings brought him back here to rookie mini camp back in May earlier this year, they worked him out at wide receiver and actually liked what he was doing there. So we will see if he can continue his run here. And Coach Zimmer likes what he sees. He says, I think it's been doing good for both of these players. Um, referring to, um, oh, God, Stoudemire. He's got good quickness on the break. He's still learning a lot of things coming from Canada. But I think he's been doing good. So, folks, hats off for our Minnesota Gophers here in Gopher Land, Minnesota God's country. Big things happen. Let me go to this chat room here before we move on to – Um, some more college news. Uh, let me see. And again, I thank everybody in the chat room tonight. Jungle brother out here, dollars and cents, that ninja, my beautiful wife, Angie, Denise, milk and cookies, who I may not have introduced properly earlier. So Denise, welcome. Dollar says fish ain't that the pot calling the kettle black when Thorny said you were talking all night. <laughs> yeah, we're going to hear from John Fisher on Thursday. I'm sure, man. Uh, Jay Fisher says dollars. We too close to football season for me to think about something other than sports. Uh, dollars. Uh, Jungle Brother says preach dollars. Dollars and cents says don't know who Eagles have to throw and catch to rock shit and tackle anyone. And speaking of the Eagles, by the way. You know, as I jump notes here before I get into what I really wanted to talk about. But, yeah, Lane Johnson, the Eagles linebacker, is facing a 10-game suspension, y'all, for PED violation. That's right. What you going to do when they come for you, man? Uh, 10 games, obviously, investigation still ongoing, but if nothing changes, he going to be gone. Lane Johnson starting the Eagle linebacker. Julian Edelman injures his foot today in practice. Now, Greg O better hope that he gets back soon. And, oh, where are my manners? Mr. Boos is in the house. That's right, Boos a bus. All the way from the land of Oklahoma. But check out these stats. I, I thought this was interesting. I came across these stats earlier with Edelman in and without him in. Now, when he plays um, last year, they're 9-0. Without him, they're 3-4. and four. With him in the game, the Patriots are scoring 33, over 33 points a game. Without him in the game, they're scoring 23 points a game. They're averaging 325 passing yards when uh, Edelman is in there. Without him, Brady's averaging 236 yards. Safe to say, the man's part of the offense, all right? So we hope he gets back. I'm definitely sure Grego hopes he gets back as well. So Busa, welcome in here. He's saying what up to everybody. Grego is back as well. And, okay, so let me transition back to college football here. One of the players that I wanted you guys to – Kind of get on your radar here as I, again, talk about players I want you to keep an eye on this year is Lamar Jackson, the quarterback from the University of Louisville. Now, I got some sound here from Coach Patino here at, uh, I think it was the ACC Media Week, talking about his quarterback. This is a, a young gentleman who took over last year as a freshman. We'll get into kind of who he is, some of his stats, and what you need to look out for from this year. Louisville going to try and make some things happen here. But anyway, here is Coach Petrino talking about his quarterback, Lamar Jackson. Jackson throws one up for grabs in the end zone. Back pylon for quick. It's a Louisville touchdown. 
a year ago on the depth chart at this time. It was or, or, or. I think we learned pretty quickly that you had something special in Lamar Jackson. How have you seen him progress, not only during the season last year and now in the offseason? You know, he did a great job in the in the preparation for the bowl game. We had a lot of extra practices in there. We went back and started from day one and, and reintroduced everything. Um, 